Hello everyone. Yeah, welcome back to class. As promised, we are taking our other parts of this same uh, topic: business organization, design, and structures. So uh, we'll be starting with centralization and decentralization. After we uh, we looked at uh, matrix and means. Uh, structure, organizational structure as well as networks and virtual arrangements so we're talking about centralized versus decentralized matrix and mist the networks and the virtual arrangements okay so uh, <coughs> an organizational structure is a pattern of interactions organizational structure organizational uh, structure is a pattern of interaction or interactions that link a company's that link a company's employees work to do that is tax and uh, technologies okay so uh, in a well-structured organization okay so you have various departments the HR department accounts department so you see if uh, you know depending on the uh, uh, capital level okay depending on the on the what on the amount of capital invested so most organizations have uh, computers they use it could be laptop or desktop depending uh, on the need okay so you know uh, things are going uh, technology things are going technology and then you know organizations has uh, begun to embrace uh, you know technology so a well structured organization we have a structure in such a way that links uh, the employees of that organization uh, uh, and the technologies as well as tax that is that to do uh, the so uh, that's a brief definition of uh, organization uh, structure So plans are put into action by and the uh, coordinated efforts of many individuals and groups within the world, within the uh, entity, within the entity. So uh, that's just a brief of uh, organizational structure. Now let's look at uh, centralized and uh, decentralized type of organizational uh, structure okay so uh, an important aspect of uh, internal relationships is the extent to which decision making is centralized so that major plan decisions are made and implemented by head office or uh, decentralized you see in a, uh, in an uh, in a centralized organization in a centralized organization senior management retain most or all of the authority senior management retain most or all of the uh, authority to make uh, important decisions to make important decisions while in a decentralized organization the authority to take major decisions is delegated authority to take major decisions is delegated to the management delegated to the management delegated to the management of uh, units delegate, delegated to management of units 
at uh, lower levels in the organization structure such as the strategic business units okay strategic strategic business units managers and then divisional uh, managers and divisional uh, managers so the choice between a centralized and a decentralized organization depends uh, to some extent on the preference of uh, the senior management to some extent depend on the preference of the uh, senior uh, management of senior uh, management okay so this uh, uh, the size and complexity of the entity also influence the extent to which decision making planning and control are centralized or decentralized so in some company you see that uh, all decisions are being made only by the by the md okay we're supposed to be uh, a one man or a sole proprietor okay so that's for your own business or a uh, small uh, business you understand but a big company such as dangote uh, nestle and the likes okay so you see that most time the owners of the company are different uh, from the uh, management okay and the management as what as its hierarchical level as its hierarchical or its hierarchical organizational or organizational structure where you have the uh you know appointed managing director uh you have the finance director is executive director you know so up to the you know up to the uh the lowest level in that organization okay so uh planning and controlling out uh centralized or decentralized depend on the complexity and the size of the organization so it is difficult to control uh, a large and complex entity from head office that is uh to have a centralized management that would be difficult okay so without delegating substantial amount of authority to divisional uh managers out together okay so uh, again the term centralization and decentralization refer to the extent to which authority within an organization has been what has been uh, delegated has been delegated so in a centralized organization large amount of authority and decision making responsibility is retained at what at the center of the organization at the center of the organization probably uh, the managing director or uh, the head uh, the, the executive uh, director okay so uh, so it usually means that top management retains many of the control and decision making uh, powers but in a decentralized organization most authority and decision making responsibilities have been delegated to others at the lower level in the organization so top management allow others to make decisions but monitor their performance and then provide uh, leadership and provides uh, provide leadership so there are different uh, degrees of centralization and decentralization ranging from the total centralization at one extreme where all decisions are taken by the third person to total decentralization at the other where very few decisions are taken by top management so uh, computer, computer systems can support either a centralized or decentralized management structure okay so in a centralized management structure uh, computer networks make it possible for information collected at lower levels of the organization or in distant geographical areas to be assessed by uh, managers at the head office they can then use the information to make informed uh, management decisions so in a decentralized management structure information held on central computer files or database can be assessed immediately by managers anywhere in the organization to help them with their uh, decision making to help them with their decision uh, making are we together okay so let's uh, look at a brief uh, example on the decentralization okay because with decentralization there is less need for a large management team at the head office okay there is less need for a ma large management team at the head office so 
uh, an extreme form of decentralization is a company where the head office consists of a small administrative group supporting the company chairman and and chief executive uh, officer so the board of directors retain responsibility uh, for some strategic decision making but the authority for most strategic decisions is delegated to the managers of strategic business units head office sets financial targets and other strategic targets for each division but the strategic business units uh, operate independently so the head of each uh, strategic business unit is accountable to a head office for the financial performance of the uh, division so head of this is responsible for preparing the financial report and accounts for the company and for presenting this to the uh, company's uh, shareholders are we together okay so let's look at uh, matrix and the uh, list our uh, type organization before uh, we go <coughs> for break and um, just let me mention this uh, before we go uh, one of the advantages of uh, having a centralized uh, management or, or decision making okay is that uh, it gives senior management more control over the activities of the business so that activities are coordinated more uh, effectively and then uh, for uh, the decentralized okay so uh, management at the lower level are able to respond more quickly to changes in business conditions and events so decentralization is usually desirable in a fast changing and unpredictable business uh, environment okay so also centralized management is more effective at applying standardization of products and procedures across the entire organization this can be important in some industry because it uh, allows for monitoring okay it allows for monitoring carrying out uh, supervision you know on the work uh, done uh, on the work done uh, by the subordinates so when the business operates over a wide geographical area, some decentralization is necessary because the head office managers are too far from the business operations. Uh, a global business, for example, operates in many different time zones. So consider MTN as an example. Are we together? Okay. So uh, let's look at matrix and the newest organization. Matrix and the newest organization a matrix organization a matrix organization has been has been defined as any organization a matrix organization has been defined as any organization that employs as an organization that employs a multiple command a multiple command system that includes that includes not only that includes not only not only what that includes not only a multiple command structure multiple command structure but also related support but also related support mechanism related support mechanism okay related support uh, mechanism or mechanisms and uh, 
and associated and uh, an associated organizational okay organizational culture and then behavior pattern and behavior pattern uh, this is the definition given by Davies and uh, Lawrence 1977 1977 again the matrix organization has been defined as any organization that, that employs a multiple command system that includes not only multiple command uh, structure but that includes a uh, multiple command uh, structure uh, and they also related support maintenance and an associated organizational culture and behavior uh, pattern okay so um, it was also suggested uh, in this class that a weakness of function organization is that no single function has responsibility for a project when several departments are involved in the work okay so the problem was recognized in the uh, 1950s in the aerospace industry in uh, united states of america where major projects and the customer orders involved the design manufacture and testing of aircraft and their different parts engines wings uh, among others so construction projects were often delayed by a failure in coordination between uh, the different functional departments are uh, involved okay so so also note that uh, a matrix a matrix and then a project organization and the project organization are similar in concept okay so when the project organization uh, that is the project manager uh, project manager uh, or management comes to an end when the project ends why a uh, matrix organization uh, has a structure of authority and command that is permanent okay that is permanent so an organizational chart for a matrix structure uh, shows functional responsibilities in vertical uh, columns. So let's uh, present a diagram. So we have functional managers. We have our production. We have quality control. And we have uh, we have design. We have this and we have this. So we have the project managers here we have the project managers okay so uh, we have responsible to quality control We have our project A. We have project A. We have 
responsible to project manager so we have project B I have the quality control experts they will have project C okay so uh, this diagram okay this diagram uh, shows a quality control expert and is responsible to the quality control manager for technical aspects of the job maintaining quality systems and so on. So the person is also responsible to the manager of project B that a manager will be concerned with uh, completing the project in time, okay, within the course budget and to uh, the proper standard. Are we together? Okay, so uh, then for the next model. For the MIST model, MIST model approach to organizational structure is also referred to as the uh, matrix organizational structure. Okay, so this method combines two or more departments within the company to leverage and benefit of both or all of them. So, blue lock operations often use a MIST model approach to organizational structure, combining product divisions with ge geographical divisions. This approach has both advantages and then disadvantages. So, uh, a mixed model or a mixed organizational structure has multiple lines of authority with some employees reporting to at least two managers. There are functional managers who oversee departments such as engineering and marketing, and then and there are project managers who oversee employees. I uh, will work on specific uh, projects. So the project managers may also report to the functional managers. An example of an organization using the mixed model approach is uh, City Group. Okay, is a uh, So, a mixed, uh, okay, so the project managers may also report to the uh, functional managers. An example is that of a city, city group, okay. So, uh, using the mixed uh, model approach, okay, so city group as, uh, city group as country, city group as Okay, so city uh, city group has country leaders and project leaders who work together on projects uh, that overlap. So one of the advantage of this uh, model organizational structure is that it optimizes employee experience and resources and work well for companies that are projects or that are projects are uh, based. Okay. So I have uh, mentioned that the mixed organi uh, organization model is one that has multiple lines of authority with some employees reporting to at least uh, two managers. So one of the advantage of a uh, mixed uh, structure is that it was optimized. It optimized 
employee experience it's optimized employee experience and the resources so um, let's move the organization structure again optimize employees experience and resources and work out uh, and resources and resources and then work where work well okay and work well for companies and work well for companies that are that's a project base. So this structure can improve lines of communication and provide flexibility for work on multiple projects. So employees working on special projects still have links to their functional department and can refer back to the other members of their department for consultation and advice. So as we all know that anything that has advantage will only have a uh, disadvantage. So what are the uh, disadvantages of uh, disadvantages of uh, missed uh, type of organization. So the major disadvantage the disadvantage the merit organization is that it requires a great deal more coordination efforts than other structures. Okay. So uh, employees who have to report to more than one boss may have conflict accountability. This can lead to conflict and stress for, for the employees involved. <coughs> so project leaders of matrix organizations must have good conflict solving skills to cope with uh, difficulties. To cope with difficulties. So let's go and break. When we come back, we shall continue from where we stop. Thank you.